Hey guys, welcome to Convolution. My name's Con, and right now it's time to check out another episode of Ruby, specifically continuing along with Volume 6, Chapter 8. I think we're at the midway point of Volume 6. Specifically, this chapter is titled Dead End. Now, I think this is referring to the literal go gates, the little gates, I was about to say goats, the little gates closing on our team, after, especially after they've had such a long journey. Obviously, they've met up with Team Juniper after that crazy, crazy action-filled horror movie style thing that we had in Brunswick Farms. I just finished going through all you guys' comments, not only on my Ruby reactions, but also the meme reactions. Thank you guys for submitting all those wonderful memes that I just went through. I think I went through like 50 of them altogether in my past two meme reaction videos, and I can't wait to check out more. Some of you guys shared some of the Ruby artwork that I'm gonna be jumping into some Ruby art reactions as well, so super excited for all that stuff going forward, but I gotta continue along with Volume 6, Chapter 8, man. And I know Ruby Chibi's about to end. Ruby Chibi's about to end, it makes me so sad said but the only thing that uh, you know i know that the lights at the end of the tunnel is that you know there's a lot more ruby content to get into including some of the other stuff that you guys recommended like um this is basically there's a video called this is basically ruby as well as the you know um mitsuru versus weiss death battle so i gotta I, i've been waiting to check those out for a very long time now what do I think is gonna happen? Honestly, I don't know. All I know is we're in Argus. We're spending, I hope we spend a little bit more time in Argus because the city looks crazy. There's like so much to look at. So it would be a shame if we didn't spend a little bit more time here, right? At least that's my understanding. And it seems like since the gates are closed, we are gonna be spending a little bit more time here. So I guess it's just maybe adventuring around Argus or the, the city of Argus or the town of Argus and get a little bit of like a, if you guys have seen Avatar The Last Airbender, there's, um, there's an episode where you just spend and it goes around telling everybody's tales around, you know, uh, what do you call Ba Sing Se. And so is it going to be something like that? Maybe we go, we, we spend a little bit of time with Crow. We spend a little time with Ruby, a little time with the Blake and uh, Yang or something like that. I don't know. But that's just what I'm thinking is going to happen. But who knows? It might be something totally different than that. But I am super excited. As always, if you guys enjoy watching these videos with me, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video with any other fans of Ruby or Rooster Teeth content out there. Also, come over to Discord. We have about like 153 as the count is right now, at least 150. 50 people help us to get to our new goal of 200 and join the wonderful conversations that are taking place over there and of course sharing the ruby artwork and memes as well as you know recommendations for any other videos for me to react to also you guys can check out some of my gaming over on twitch i just uploaded some of the uh, final fantasy 7 remake gameplay that i'm going through right now super excited for all that but for now let's go ahead and dive into ruby volume 6 chapter 8 titled dead end what else can dead end mean i don't know man hmm dead end but for who? <laughs> Anyways, in three, two, one. Oh, I remember reading the meme about it last time. Ruby's all like, oh, I can run faster. I can, I could probably catch up with Weiss in like a second, but I choose not to because she's enjoying it. Oh, dude, we need more stuff about Silver Eyes, dude. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Nora was like, who's the old lady? Yeah, we gotta, we gotta have everybody's introductions with everything. You know what I'm saying? Man, what the hell is Adam up to? And the rest of these mofos. What what you all up to, what? Why are you doing this, huh? Oh, man. And some of you guys did let me know that these next couple of episodes, you know, it's like, they're gonna be a little bit more relaxed and chilled, and I think that's good. You know, last couple of episodes, you know, have been very, like, lore-heavy, as well as, you know, sort of, like, horror-filled, you know, kind of intense, if you ask me. Maybe not all that action-packed, but intense, nonetheless. Silhouette against the moon! Let's get this shit! So, I, I like the fact that we're getting some, uh, hopefully, some quiet episodes, or you guys could be, like, Come just effing with me. You didn't even hear us out! Our orders are clear! The Mistral Atlas border is closed! Please, have a good day. But a good day! Hey, if you don't want to believe that I'm friends with Ironwood... General Ironwood! Yeah, General Ironwood, then fine. But look, we have Weiss Schnee with us, and we're trying to get her home safely. Right, sort of. Approach! Ooh, new music. Very 
very military. Very well. <laughs> you may speak with our commanding officer. We will fetch her at once. Winter? No, no, she's she's back in Atlas. What am I saying? These guys are so are weird. Kind of super weird. Uh, yeah. Hmm. What's wrong? Well, I may know this commanding officer. Really? That's good, isn't it? Uh, if she's your friend, then maybe she'd be more willing to help us. I wouldn't exactly call us friends. Acquaintances? Not quite. I was gonna say that. Colleagues? Former? Enemies? That's the one. Wait, what? Oh, yes, I come through here about once every ten years to get my eyes checked up in Atlas. Oh. You bring outside cashews on one flight, and suddenly you're placed cashews. on the additional screening list for life. Wow. You've gotta be kidding me. Now, now, let's not give up hope yet. Maybe she's dead. <laughs> I freaking love Maria. Introducing special operative Caroline Cordovan. Caroline Cordovan? Oh. Interesting. Wow, they're the same height. Which she devil? <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> I see you've chosen larger contraband to smuggle this time. Oh, Cordo. You know they say time changes people, but I see you've still got that stick right up. Oh, Miss uh, uh Cordovan? <gasps> My name is Ruby Rose, and I was wondering if you would hear us out about I've already heard what your other little friends had to say, Miss Rose. What are you doing back here? I thought I told you to oh. leave! Uh. And I told you we went Wow. Get as well. You civilians are clearly incapable of comprehending the importance of our mission here in Argus. So allow me to say this slowly with smaller words. This base, that relay tower, the very safety of Argus are all gifts from the glorious kingdom of Atlas. And it is my duty to uphold them, as only I have the wit and tenacity for such a task. Such wit! Such tenacity! Or maybe Atlas just wanted to get you as far from the kingdom as possible. <gasps> You're just like the rest of these Argus ingrates. This city wouldn't even be here if it weren't for our Atlesian ancestors. And what do we get in return? The entire world is ready to put a knife to our throats. Please. We know your kingdom had nothing to do with the fall of Beacon. We were there. No one's happy about the Atlas borders or embargo, but I know General Ironwood is just worried. It's why we need to talk the to The general them. is no coward. Atlas is strong. If all the kingdoms plan to make us their enemy, then so be it. Atlas will prevail. Atlas will prevail. Do you guys seriously have to do that? This lady is something if else. If Mishni has truly come to her senses and wishes to return to her family, then of course the Atlas military will escort her home. But the kingdom will not be responsible for her friends of questionable character. Oh, bitch, no, you did it. What's that supposed oh. to mean? It means Maria, stick that right. Wow. Oh, yeah? Your base looks like a big dumb boot. You tell her, Nora. Show, Nora. <laughs> Dear God, that lady is something I else. I don't, Weiss. I told you we wouldn't leave your side for a second. We'll find a way to Atlas, together. Hmm. Oh man. So where are we going now? Yeah, what's the plan? The plan? He doesn't have one. The plan just got shut on our face three times over. Damn, Crow. I'm going for a drink. Of course. Of course. Uncle Crow, I really think we should try and come up with something. Oh, dude. Together. I was What's kind of afraid problem? of this. It's not your fault we can't go on. If he's going to be a jerk, then we'll just come up with something without him. Right. I mean, we've got Ozpin with us. He usually knows what to do. Uh, that's a, what a big it? issue. Oh, they don't know! John! Everything we did was for nothing! 
That's not true. Really? Because it sure does sound like it. What, you told him? Uh, if Salem can't be killed, then how are we supposed to win this? <sighs> That's the main question. Wow. <laughs> great plan, everyone. Let's let's take a moment to breathe, everybody. Look, none of this is great, we know. But we're not the bad guys here. Right. Are we sure about that? What? He's in your head, isn't he? Did you already know about this? He didn't know any of it. Oh no, the smooch meme! Can we even trust him? John! How do we even know it's really him? What if we've been talking to that liar this whole time? John! Yeah, calm your ass, boy. I know how he feels. I understand. It's a difficult. Is he gonna be okay? I don't know. I think it would be best if we had some time to ourselves. That's probably for the best. Somebody talk to poor Oscar, man. Maybe we could all use some space. Oh, dude, look at this dude. Somebody talk with him. Give him a hug. Cuddle, people. Cuddle. Kid needs some. Come on, please. Who's she calling? Oh, crow. Just find the nearest bar and he's there. Where are you? You know, I came out here to avoid the yelling. Sorry. I like this place. The others place. went to get food for tonight. Patio? Why not go with them? I don't know. Butterflies? I don't know anything. What do I tell Jean and his team when we don't even have a plan? The crow's out drinking, Osmond hasn't come back, and even if he did, I don't know if I could trust him. And there's always Jin, but we only have one more question we can ask her. I feel like I'm letting everyone down. That's not you true. You know, you don't give yourself enough credit. Oh, <laughs> Thanks. That wasn't a compliment. <laughs> uh, what? If I have to explain it to you, it'll just defeat the purpose. But if you're tired of not knowing anything, how about we discuss those eyes of yours? Yes. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Please. You would be honored. Teach me. Sit down for Pete's sake. Ah, uh, yes. Let's start with what you do know. Tell me. Uh, Nothing. Silver-eyed people are supposed to be legendary warriors, or something. <laughs> and at the fall of Beacon, I turned a giant wyvern into stone. Wyvern? Oh, they boy. dropped it. It's a wyvern. Look, uh, if I already knew everything, I wouldn't be asking for help. <laughs> Yelling. It's not your fault. I had my father to teach me. And even he didn't have all the answers. Was he silver-eyed? But what he told me makes sense, given what I've seen. Genetic? Was he a huntsman too? It wasn't really an official title back in his day. Oh. I only knew him as an old soldier and an excellent teacher. I the never war? attended one of those war? fancy academies of yours, but I scored higher on the license exam than any other huntsman or huntress that day. The dope. <sighs> He must have been proud. <laughs> he would have scolded me for showing off. He'd never been able to find much information about our abilities. Just legends of warriors whose eyes shone like mirrors, reflecting the light of the world onto darkness. Light of the world. He found so little, in fact, that it made him cautious. How could such powerful bloodlines be so rare? Unless like the Schneez? something was actively seeking to destroy them. Salem. Right. I tried to keep the my powers a secret. Crocodile. But as you know, it wasn't enough. I owe my life to my training and my semblance. At the end of the day, those are still your most powerful tools. What is your semblance? 
Gravity. <laughs> Reflexes. Yeah, a right. silly name I came up with. Reflexes. Hard to explain, but I can sense everything better than most and react to attacks almost before they happen. Combine that with my training and secret ability to turn Grim to stone, or blind them, or vaporize them. <laughs> <clears throat> And that's how you become the Grim Reaper. Wow. Grim Reaper so, 2.0 right here. How do I laser beam monsters with my eyeballs? First, you stop thinking like that. I want you to think of all the times you've triggered your powers. What did those moments have in common? I was scared and stressed. Is it emotional? Like unlocking a semblance? The music is back. But more focused than that. Think. What is it you wanted? It's been so long since I've heard it. I wanted to protect my friends. Red light Precisely. Roses. It is the desire to preserve life which fuels the light inside you. And make no mistake, it is light. Preservation is an extension of creation. Or, at the very least, an enemy of destruction. The creatures of Grimm were made by the God of Darkness. But your light comes from his brother. How do you know that? Got it. I always knew how to use the light, but never why it only worked on the Grimm. Then Jin showed us her vision. Were you paying attention? The explosion, the explosion. The light, the light explosion. There you go. The God of Light. His eyes. Wait, his eyes were literally silver? Where do we start? Well, not here. The light will only work in the presence of Grim. <laughs> meaning the only practice you'll get will be a trial by fire. Oh. But what you can do is focus on creating a state of mind that you can tap into when you need it. Don't... Think about your light as a means of destroying evil, but as a way to protect the people of Remnant. But that can't be right. Hmm? You said the light only reacts to Grim, but I used it during our battle at Haven. It this will be the day it's Cinder. waiting. Interesting. Perhaps there was something that you just. Volume one opening! Ruby! Guys, what's going on? It's Oscar. He's missing. Oh no! Y'all messed up. Silhouette against the moon. Let's get this shit. Oh man, what a freaking episode! Okay, if this is how Rooster Teeth is gonna do their slow and steady episodes. I am so happy that I, I started watching Ruby, dude. Oh my freaking goodness. This is this is an amazing episode. There is so much like layered within, well, arguably maybe not so much, but you know, there's an incredible lot of detail in it. Well, let's start with the beginning. What did we get? We got a new character, Carolina Cardovan? Card Cardovan. Cordovan, Carolina Cordovan. Um, she is like the uh, head honcho or the admiral or general uh, who is in charge of the military in Argus, or at least the Atlas commissioned military in Argus, alongside her two little fellow henchmen dudes who are, I'm guessing, twins? I don't know, man. They remind me of these two henchmen dudes who are dressed very similarly, except that one, the one that I'm thinking of are black and white. Um, white and black, excuse me. Uh, there were two characters in Final Fantasy XV who looked exactly like that. You know, you guys can look it up, but man, that, that's what they reminded me of. But, you know, I, there was an inter in interesting uh, music. I thought the song or the music was new, but now upon reflection, it was the Atlas military music back when it was introduced back in volume two or when Ironwood was introduced, or at least I recall it more significantly from volume three when Winter was specifically introduced. That's when I remember that military style music. This was slightly different, but it's still very similar. But it's crazy how much the music is reminiscent of previous volumes within Ruby. Uh, Catalyst, you actually told me to pay attention to some of the music in this uh, specific episode. And I think I caught it. I think I caught it that that um 
what do you call it? there was red like roses and then uh this will be the day you know there was there was like a piano style version of those two specific songs at least the opening version of those two specific songs and i'm so glad they're included because they're some of my be favorite uh ruby songs to date and, you know red like roses at least the first the opening sonata where it's just piano or violin mixed in that's what first attracted me into ruby the red trailer if you guys go back to my red trailer reaction i was completely blown away not just from the action but the music itself so I feel like that if you're going back to your roots and back to a character that back to a character focused scene that is ruby centric you know what I'm saying with the character ruby specifically you got to get back to that you know that origin moment back to the this will be the day and back to red like roses opening sonata you know what I'm saying damn dude okay new character Cordovan she's a bit of an asshole She's a bit of an asshole and not openly stated, but she's a bit of an asshole. She and Maria definitely have some beef from previous history. I'm guessing they were both taller and then over time they grew short. But man, oh man, Maria with that, you know, do you still have that stick right up your, oh man, oh man. Maria, Maria talks some shit. And I think this is the thing with the, I've seen this in a lot of like elderly people. It's like they just went through enough shit in their lives. They don't just give a damn anymore there's like literally no filter they say what they gotta say you know what i'm saying so i would have been so happy to just let her go apeshit crazy on Kirk cordovan they introduced her as very somewhat of an unlikable character but not unlikable without reason you know just like here's a character that we just you know you'll just learn to hate but i feel like you know she's just very she, she's very she's she seems like the type of person that you would expect an atlas military uh leader to be you know someone who's very uh all for atlas you know atlas is the you know master race or something like that you know what i'm saying is like our military might is due to our grand you know our people's will and our people's might and the strength of our general you know what i'm saying she's very devoted to general ironwood obviously as this episode sort of indicated and then obviously you know the schnee schnee family because she seems so uh, willing to take the Shni uh, Weiss in to like return her to her family but she was very like you know with the moment she saw Blake she did that little bit of prejudice came out though she was still remaining politically accurate based on what she was about what she was uh, about to say I don't think we've seen a scene like this before where like the Atlas flag is like floating in the back and she's just talking about the grandiosity of you know the beauty of Atlas and whatnot so I had to like I, I stayed silent for that whole speech I was like hmm very interesting so you know you get to see a new type of character so that's cool and and right away we have we see a character who seriously has a history with maria you know and so that makes me think like man is it just coincidence that maria met ruby and now maria is here with a person that she knows and hates you know blocking their way seems very coincidental but i think not you know i think you know the finding maria at least for ruby was very uh an important sort of almost destiny like kind of thing you know I've, I've mentioned this before but that being said right after that we immediately dive into team juniper being filled in on all of what Jin said you know and obviously uh, john is the one that gets the most mad or at least they're all mad but john's the one who's you know expresses it that much more and i would i expected this to happen i kind of expected this to happen I, but and now it makes sense why that original scene of him pushing um uh, uh, Oscar was there and now it makes sense because he was just so pissed off at Ospin which sucks for Oscar man which really sucks for Oscar because Oscar said something back in Ruby volume 3 chapter for volume 6 chapter 4 and he's like I'm just gonna be another one of his lifetimes right and that's the one line that still like sticks in my mind man I still haven't forgotten about that and it's just so weird thinking about like how all the all these people who've had Ospin inside of them have just like you know thought the same thing you know that they they, they are just they're just gonna be you know remnants of memory within Ospin's life essence or life form or whatever as he goes through multiple lifetimes you know etc 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 and Oscar's just scared that he's just gonna be one of those you know uh, rocks that's sort of turned over by the tide you know easily forgotten in the pages of history you know what i'm saying so it's just sad and like nobody understands what he's going through and the only person who does ospin was you know it's just 
choosing to just secure himself in in his mind palace and nobody not a single person is going over to oscar and like giving him a hug or calling i just felt so bad for the foo you know what i'm saying i just felt so bad for my dude oscar is like my favorite one my probably my favorite male character right now i don't like i said you know he just i just love him so much and so you know he's all alone and that's probably why he ran away you know he just couldn't handle it he's just a kid man he's the youngest person there i guess right i think he's the younger than i think he's like ruby's age right i think one of you guys told me he's like somewhere close to ruby's age it's hard to say what's gonna happen man but like uh, i feel bad for the dude and but you know i i i know like i'm saying like nobody's went over to console him but i don't blame everybody else either because like everybody's just been through some hell and now they're in this like sort of mood this con perpetual state of mood where like you know they're the, the, the they've literally had a dead end literally quite figuratively and literally have hit a dead end and they don't know what to do and they're you know they're what do you call their uh, Uncle Crow, who's supposed to be their leader, who's supposed to always have an answer to know what to do, is, you know, off drinking off his worries somewhere. And it's it's going to be an interesting to see how they move on past that. Maybe they'll leave Uncle Crow behind. Well, no, they, uh, Ruby and Yang would never do that. But Uncle Crow needs to, like, rise. You know, the crow must rise. Rise! You know what I'm saying? He, he, he's got to drop that alcohol ball. he got to stop drinking and then we can talk about bringing him back a little bit sobering up the crow yeah sobering up crow that's what we got to do but i'm glad that you know in even in the absence of crow ruby has this other mentor to look up to in a beautifully beautifully crafted scene man in the and it's not like you know they're out in the wilderness or something like that it's a simple scene in a backyard with like you know minimal amount of flowers and stuff and it's sort of this nature like scene this scene like when they're talking about the god of light and the power of the you know silver eyes it felt very reminiscent of like how i felt when uh salem entered the god of light's domain you know there's less trees the wind is flowing all these butterflies all around sort of the symbol of life and all things good you know and ruby of course asks you know knows very little about silver eyes i mean we think you know obviously we've speculated on silver eyes and we have all our ideas but and Ruby, at the end of the day, Ruby knows very little. And it's up to Maria, the teacher, that, you know, the Silver Eyes are not just from warriors. And she's also had her own questions and uh, what do you call it? her own theories about what this could be possible, what, what could be made possible by the Silver Eyes. But it was all based on her father's teachings, who may, might, maybe might have had Silver Eyes themselves. It could be a genetic thing. We don't know yet. But uh, we learn about Maria's powers. I thought it was gravity, but apparently it's uh, reflexes. I don't know but like she says she's able to sense things before they happen maybe that's what led her to joining ruby maybe she sensed like she needed to stay on that specific cart to before when it like toppled over i don't know man there's a whole lot of stuff in the air but the whole thing with the god of light that that's the god of light's power the silver eyes i didn't i i guess i didn't take a good look at the god of light but i didn't even notice he had silver eyes are those even silver eyes i thought he had white eyes you know it's like just deity like shiny white eyes you know i thought his explosive power that sort of dusted the grim at that moment that was where the power led from but i didn't know it was specifically he had silver eyeballs you know cool very cool i love it i love that we actually went back to volume three chapter three volume six chapter three stuff and the little scene of the god of light and god of destruction is cool stuff and maria understood what that meant and that's why life the feeling of life or the understanding of life or the appreciation of life is what triggers triggers the power so that's interesting so we got to learn a lot of cool stuff until we got interrupted by the knowledge that you know oscar had you know up and ran but man oh man the music and the atmosphere and just that the, 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 you know the scene where you're just sitting down and talking to like a teacher and learning stuff learning stuff that you genuinely want to know more about that's the feeling i got from this episode and the atmosphere and the environment and the backyard the patio the butterflies the grass you know sitting underneath the tree it's just a nice homey feeling you know nice homey feeling with the music in the background it's good. It makes me bubbly and feel nice all over. What can I say? It's awesome. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Uh, is there something I missed, forgot to notice, or failed to mention this episode? I'm pretty sure I might have might have missed something. Maybe what something Cordovan said. I don't know. 
you are more than welcome to share that down below and leave that down leave down below i know many of you guys will obviously leave this information down below but you know i'm just curious how did this episode make you feel or this scene in particular or what was it like hearing those musical cues once more i loved it i absolutely loved it man what can i say this is ruby this is great this is a great ruby episode so far i don't think i've seen a, a low uh a low tier ruby episode at all every episode has hit me you know someplace hard you know what i'm saying so great volume overall great volume so far and this is just the halfway point you know we still got uh half of volume six left to go so i'm super excited check more out leave your comments down below can't wait to get to them i know this video is going to get blocked but hopefully you'll see it in about two days yeah so until then uh, i'm gonna react to the volume six excuse me chapter nine next and then uh we'll go on to our final batch of ruby chibi episodes hope you guys are having a wonderful day or a wonderful night wherever you guys are i'll see you guys later bye thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it please subscribe hit that like button and feel free to share the video and i'll see you guys next time